Namaste, uh, this is Abhinav. I welcome you. In this video, I am covering 10 top myths about uh, Buddhism, Buddha's teachings. Uh, now, I have made a list of points. It may be 10 or more than 10 or less than 10. Uh, sorry for that. But uh, I will just pick up one by one uh, the myths. Right. So, the first myth is that Buddha is God. Right. And this is a myth because Buddha never, Buddha was a human being who attained enlightenment through his efforts. Like after he renounced the world, he went six years in search, he talked to different masters, uh, did certain ascetic practices and, you know, uh, self-modification, self, you know, uh, harming the body and, you know, kind of uh, uh, extreme practices. And then he did not find the way. And then he sat in the Bodhi, Bodhi tree for the deep practice of meditation for with, from which he found Nirvana, the enlightenment, and he became the Buddha. Right? So he was Siddhartha, who Siddhartha Gautama, who became Buddha, right? So Buddha, Buddha, Buddha's like uh, uh, one thing was that see, I have achieved it through effort, through the right effort, which is one of the paths in the Noble Eightfold Path. Through the right effort, you can also achieve that. So Buddha was was a teacher, right? Buddha said that I have done this, I have found the solution, and I am giving you this solution to get free from suffering. Now you have to walk the path, and you have to. So in Buddhism. If you don't like, you know, uh, in a normal, in a other religions, you pray to a God, you pray, worship to a God, and the God says that you worship me and I will give you salvation. Buddha did not promise salvation, right, at all, right? Buddha just said that I will show you the way, so, and you will have to walk on it. So he was a, in Hindi, they call it as a Margdata, Margdarshak, right? So he showed the path, right? Now, Buddhist, now in certain Buddhist traditions, they have this thing about worships and certain simple and uh, nice rituals, in, you know, and all. But they were not part of the Buddha's teachings. Buddha never said that, you know, worship me or something. But depending upon the, the, the person who is uh, following Buddha's teachings, depending upon his uh, understanding level and depend upon his, uh, you know, uh, kind of a, what he feels will get the feeling more. Uh, 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 so then there are certain people who do these rituals but they were not part of the Buddha's teachings right okay and in some religions like Hinduism they say that Buddha is a ninth uh, uh, avatar of the Vishnu now again there is no reference of this in any of the Buddha's teachings right Buddha never said that I am a god or I am you know so you pray to me or you know worship me now this is again there is a heated debate between uh, you know, certain sections in the Hindu community and 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 the uh, Buddhists who refuse this, I will not get into that debate. But Buddha never said that I am a god, right? So that is the first thing. Second, Buddhism is a religion again a myth. Now, Buddha Buddhism Buddhism is what a collection of Buddha's teachings, right? On how we can free ourselves from suffering. Now, what happens is all the enlightened masters like Jesus, Krishna, Buddha, they gave their teachings. They did not want to make religions out of it. But then over time, people made religions out of those, those teachings. So, again, this is Buddha's, it's, Buddhism is basically a collection, a body of Buddha's teachings. But people practice, certain people practice it as a religion. They, they practice it as a religion. They say that we are, you know, Buddhist, Buddhism as a religion, right? But this is not fundamentally, Buddhism is not fundamentally a religion. It's a way of living, right? Okay, and... And you don't need to convert yourself to Buddhism to practice Buddha's teachings. Buddha was very accepting of everyone, all the religions, people who wanted to follow the path. He did not ask whether you are a Hindu or you are Muslim or a Christian. There are people who just voluntarily decided to take the good things from the Buddha's thing and uh, knowledge and start implementing in their life. So this is perfectly fine. You don't need to convert yourself uh, into Buddhism to practice Buddha's teachings. Right? Okay, then Buddha, then another myth is Buddhism is all about meditation, meditation, meditation. No, it is not like that. When you actually go through and you understand the teachings, you will you'll understand that there are main, basically main three elements. One is ethical conduct. That means living your life in the right way. That means speaking in a right way, right? Doing the right actions, not killing anyone, not stealing, not lying, right? All the ethical things. Then second is mental development. Mental development includes meditation. Why meditation? Because our mind needs to be one pointed. Only then we will get the wisdom. We will get the insight, pra prajna, right? 
and third is the wisdom element where it is like seeing the world in the right way that everything is impermanent don't get attached because that creates suffering right so it is not only about meditation meditation you can if you decide not meditate and still follow buddha's teachings however it is highly recommended and and that's why meditation is one of the pillars of buddha's teachings because only when the mind is one pointed will you be able to practice in the right way otherwise you can get stuck in a lot of theories and confusions and debates and arguments and not actually practice buddha's teachings right so that was the thing then another myth is buddhism is hard to grasp now see buddha's teachings are vast he traveled for 45 years he gave a lot of discourses wherever he went in oral teachings and they, which were later codified so it's like said them 84000 discourses are there so it's like a vast body of the teachings are there however the good thing is and this is why it's a myth because buddha's core teaching is the four noble truths and the noble eightfold path which he delivered in the first teaching uh, in sarnath to the five monks and that remains his core teaching so what happens is that he tra- all the other teachings of the buddha see buddha was very intelligent teacher he adjusted his teachings to what the audience needed right so at that time or whoever he was addressing but all those teachings came back to the four noble truths and the noble eightfold path or somewhere it was connected to that so if you grasp the core teachings that is enough you don't need to yes if you really need to go through uh, other other texts then you can but for, first most important thing is to get hold of the the core teachings i have also made another video of beginners guide to uh, learning buddha's teachings you can also see that so if you are a beginner you can you know uh, get uh, my suggestions and start learning about the core teachings of the buddha and then you depending upon what is your inclination you can proceed forward right so it is not hard to grasp there is only the core teaching which is the main teaching okay then you need to be a vegetarian so again there is no such requirement of being a vegetarian only then you can practice uh, buddhism right now what as per my research what i have understood is that in certain countries they still so in buddhism initially what happened was buddha because they were monks right they used to just uh, you know beg for the alms and whatever they got even if it was meat they had to eat because that that was their only source of you know what they can eat right now uh, there is no such any you know teaching that you should only be a vegetarian and 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 practice buddhism nothing like that is there yes there are there is a very clear precept of no killing that means and a precept is again not a commandment it's a guideline right that if we kill someone we create karma and that karma creates suffering right but there is no such thing that you know you need to be a vegetarian only then you can practice what my suggestion will be and i'll make a detailed video on this particular aspect is that allow it to come naturally allow the compassion to arise in you naturally it doesn't mean that you stop everything if you wait till then maybe you will you can never come what i will suggest is if you want whatever your dietary habits include non vegetarian food no problem continue with that start learning buddha teaching start doing meditation over time it, you may even stop slowly or even fully stop uh, eating non vegetarian food but that is like not a prerequisite being a vegetarian is not a prerequisite for pre- practicing uh, uh, buddha's teachings okay then one uh, myth is that buddha buddhism is only for monks or who and or it requires one to renounce the world absolutely wrong buddhism is both for monks those who are serious about practicing buddha's teachings uh, and can afford to be a monk or a nun and can leave the worldly duties they can do there are certain specific teachings of buddha on uh, monastic discipline if you cannot leave your worldly duties it's perfectly fine you can be a household and householder and practice buddha's teachings there is a beautiful book by jack confield a uh, buddhist teacher a mindfulness teacher on a uh, noble eightfold path of householder it is available on the buddha net website you can check out that right so buddha had if you see actually the buddha's teachings were there were a lot of teachings on earning the right livelihood a uh, relationship between husband wife right all the material things also buddha had given guidance so it is completely wrong to assume that it is only a religion or or only a kind of a, a set of teachings made for monks or you need to renounce the world nothing like that right okay then then there is this thing about that buddha teachings are pessimistic why because the if you see the first noble truth it says life is suffering but again it is a wrong way to 
learn about Buddha's teaching. Buddha never said that life is only suffering. Buddha also listed out that life is happiness. Buddha also listed out lot of things where you know uh, we 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 things which bring happiness. Our family, our 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 loved ones, right? So, but Buddha's teaching was that if you crave, if you crave uh, 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 for love or happiness from things which are impermanent, this whole creation is impermanent. If you that craving, your craving creates suffering, and your craving binds you, right? But you can find joy which is right now in this moment only. So Buddha, if you see a true Buddhist, is never you will see him or her sad or depressed. True Buddhist is happy because he or she knows the reality of things that there is suffering. If I get attached, if I if I have craving and all, but if I don't have the craving, then I am free. And there is no suffering, so I hope that and uh, I was able to bring this out clear. Buddha's teaching is not only about suffering; his teaching is about seeing the reality as it is. Right? That if you crave, you will create suffering. It will create karma, and then you again you remain in this cycle of birth and death. Right? Okay. Buddha's teaching is not pessimistic. Buddha's teaching is not optimistic. Buddha is a teacher who shows the reality how things are, right? Okay. Then another myth is Buddha's teachings are very strict. Rules are there now. See, there are no strict rules in Buddha's teaching. You have the five precepts: no, no, no lying, no killing, no stealing, no sexual misconduct. All these rules are there, but these rules are not like like the Ten Commandments. This in Buddha is a, not a God-centered uh, religion where if you make a mistake, then there you'll go and there'll be a judgment day. You know, after your death, and then there will be a judgment. There is nothing like that. Buddha is again, I am, as I am saying, Buddha said, if you do this, then this this will happen, right? The the theory, the law of cause and effect. That means why Buddha said no killing, no lying, no stealing, right? Or no sexual misconduct, right? Why? Because Buddha said is because these things create a lot of karma, right? Create a big amount of karma, which can create a big amount of suffering. So these were only guidelines. You follow or not, that is upon you, right? So Buddha's teachings are actually very easy, very practical, and it's not something like th only theory theory. It is actually practical teachings. Okay. Then there is a myth that Buddhist uh, 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 in Buddhism the Nirvana is like a heaven. No, the Buddha says all there are thirty one some thirty one planes of existence as per the Buddha's teachings. All the planes of existence. So there are hell realms. There are no human realm and then there are godly realms. Buddha says in the entire thirty-one realms there is suffering. Why? Because there is impermanence, right? Because nothing is permanent. Even for the gods, right? The, the deities who are there in the higher realms, they also know that once their good karmas are extinguished, they'll have to come back to the lower realms. So Buddha's teaching was getting free from this cycle of the birth and death, being born again and again in the various realms. So it is not about the heaven, the Christian concept of heaven, right? I'll make a separate video on the planes of realms of existence where I'll discuss more about this. Then, uh, last uh, is that Buddhism is only for the elite people, only for the you know people of high caste. Now, this is a fundamental thing where Buddhism differs from other religions. Buddhism is open for all. Buddha's teachings are open for all, irrespective of your caste, creed, religion, your social status, how much money you have. Nothing like that. Anyone can can uh, can come to if they resonate with Buddha's teachings, they are most welcome and start implementing the Buddha's teachings. So it is not so for some you know some people with our uh, only some people can follow his teachings. Other people cannot follow their teachings. Nothing like that is there. So I hope. In this video, you got some idea, some clarity on these myths, right? And these misconceptions. If you have any other uh, question or any other uh, doubt or confusion, do mention the comment section, and I will respond back to you. And I hope this video was useful to you. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you. Bye.